Good evening, and welcome to our TV show featuring documentaries revealing the realities behind myths using research and scholarship. I'm your host, Ergün Kırlıkovalı. You're welcome to send me your feedback at hashtag ethocide. Repeat, hashtag ethocide. Every year, the Armenian lobby uses the month of April to intensify its efforts to demonize Turkey and Azerbaijan with allegations of genocide. The Armenians try to consolidate the Armenian status as the sole victim, continue receiving financial help for Armenia, thus squandering the hard-earned dollars of the generous U.S. taxpayer. The Armenians misrepresent Turkey and Azerbaijan as aggressors to tarnish these nations' image. The Armenians also try to set the stage for reparations and territorial demands. Finally, they whitewash the dreadful human rights record of the corrupt and violent Armenia, which until recently had illegally occupied up to 20% of Azerbaijan expelling, at gunpoint, a million Azerbaijanis from their homes. I'm, of course, deeply disturbed by the calls to recognize the so-called Armenian genocide. This would not contribute to peace efforts in the Caucasus, as it is a biased approach to a historical controversy. A product of the Armenian lobby was an obscure California law that they rammed through Sacramento in 2000 to codify the allegations of Armenian genocide. Thanks to the 2009 verdict by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, it was struck down as being unconstitutional, usurping the federal government's foreign affairs powers. The same court threw out another similar lawsuit in 2020, 2012. But perhaps the biggest breakthrough came from the other side of the pond. The highest court in Europe, the European Court of Human Rights, or ECHR for short, issued a milestone of a verdict on October 15, 2015, that will resonate for decades to come. The ECHR's Grand Chamber ruled that Armenian genocide is an opinion, not a court verdict. As such, it can be rejected, and that would be an exercise of the human right to freedom of speech. Thus, it was determined by the highest court in Europe that refuting, disproving, and rejecting the Ar Armenian uh, allegations of genocide was not a hate speech, as the deceptive Armenian lobby likes to claim, but it was mere free speech. Furthermore, the court ruled that alleged, the alleged Armenian genocide could not be compared to the court-proven Jewish Holocaust. The latter had gone through legal scrutiny at a competent tribunal, and the intent was documented to be factual. Please see the Nuremberg verdict of October 1st, 1946. A formidable array of prominent historians, scholars, researchers, and experts in the history of the Ottoman Empire also dispute the Armenian allegations of genocide. In fact, here's what 69 of them said in a public statement that was published in the New York Times and Washington Post on May 19, 1985. I quote, as for the charge of genocide, no signatory of this statement wishes to minimize the scope of Armenian suffering. We are likewise cognizant that it cannot be viewed as separate from the suffering experienced by the Muslim inhabitants of the region. The weight of evidence so far uncovered points in the direction of serious intercommunal warfare perpetrated by Muslim and Christian irregular forces, complicated by disease, famine, suffering, and massacres in Anatolia, and adjoining areas during the First World War. The resulting death toll among both Muslim and Christian communities of the region was immense. 
but much more remains to be discovered before historians will be able to sort out precisely responsibility between warring and innocent, and to identify the causes for the events which resulted in the death or removal of large numbers of the Eastern Anatolian population, Christian and Muslim alike. Statesmen and politicians make history and scholars write it. For this process to work, scholars must be given access to the written records of the statesmen and politicians of the past." Unquote. To date, the relevant archives in Turkey are open and more than 100 countries have already sent their scholars there, except Armenia. Armenian archives are still closed and limited access is given only to those who subscribe to the official Armenian narrative. So what are the Armenians afraid of? What information is in there that they want to keep secret? That could destroy the Armenian narrative and the image. Be that as it may, let's turn now our attention to Los Angeles Unified School District, or LAUSD for short and see how politicized history, scholarship, is ruining lives of innocent people. First, a little background. The LAUSD board adopted two resolutions last year, Resolution 010, 2021, and Resolution 008, 2021. Both are substantially similar as they denigrate and demonize Turkey and Turkish people and Turkish Americans, as well as by association, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijani people, and Azerbaijani Americans. These resolutions violate the board's own rules by showing contempt for the court and its standing verdicts in the US and Europe. They are based on a racist and dishonest reading of history. They are wrong on the facts if the Turkish-Armenian conflict uh, and uh, wrong on the Karabakh issue. Karabakh is legally and historically part of Azerbaijan, not Armenia. It has never been a part of Armenia. Armenians illegally occupied Karabakh for 27 years, committed war crimes and ethnic cleansing there. Four United Nations Security Council resolutions, 822, 853, 874, and 884, for which U.S., along with other UNSC number, members, unanimously voted, clearly recognized Karabakh as part of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Res Resolution 010 was ran through in such a rush, for example, that the LAUSD Rule 72 was waived. That rule is only allowed for true emergencies regarding employment and maintenance matters at LAUSD. A political matter oceans and continents away is certainly not within the scope of LAUSD board's responsibilities and authorities. Waiving Rule 72 for such a purpose is scandalous. Resolution 010 also violated Rule 73. While Rule 73 can be waived, it was not waived by the board, since the board was more concerned to appease a special interest then follow its own rules. Furthermore, no Turkish American or Azerbaijani American person or organization were consulted or invited to give the other side of the story to the board. After all, these are complex historical and legal matters on which board members have no expertise. Democracy is not bowing to pressure by majority but protecting the rights of the minority despite pressure by the majority. LA is a melting pot of hundreds of ethnic groups such as Latinos, Asians, Blacks, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, and more. Yet, LA USC board has not recognized the genocide of the Native Americans. This is ironic because in June 2019, California Governor Gavin Newsom uh, apologized to the Native Americans with these words. I quote, that's what it was, a genocide, no other way to describe it. 
And that's the way it needs to be described in the history books. Unquote. Have you declared a holiday, LAUSD, for owners of the land that you're sitting on, dear board members? Then there was a slavery issue I, I, in this country for centuries, victimizing generations of African Americans. Asians were discriminated against and persecuted. Hispanics were discriminated against and persecuted. Jews were discriminated against and persecuted. Catholics were discriminated against and persecuted. It is a historical fact that the first genocide of the 20th century was the Herero and Nama genocide in Namibia, Africa, in 1904-1908 time period. Germany was quick to recognize the long discredited Armenian claim of genocide as a fact, but passed no resolution to recognize its own genocide. Why did LAUSD overlook this fact? Will the LAUSD only respond to political pressure, but not the letter and spirit of education? It's their job. Education is their job, not politics. Some 8 million people were massacred in Congo between 1886 and 1908, yet LAUSD is not honoring that genocide. The Holodomor, where millions of Ukrainian people perished in the 1930s, or the Stalin purges of the 1930s, yet LAUSD is not honoring that genocide either. If LAUSD thinks the term genocide is a legal term that was coined by the 1948 UN Convention on Prevention of Genocide, ratified in 1951, thus only tragedies that happened after 1951 can be commemorated as genocide, then why was the long discredited political claim of Armenian genocide treated as settled history? There are many more cases in history, Algerians, Cambodians, Ethiopians, Uyghurs, natives of Brazil, Australia, Canada, Paraguay, Guatemala, Colombia, El Salvador, on and on, at least too long to read here, where humans in humanity to human may be considered genocide. But LAUSD is not the institution to make that determination, is it? The UN established the International Court of Justice just for this purpose. Only verdicts passed by the ICJ can be considered genocide. There are three cases so far that fit the bill. The Jewish Holocaust, Rwanda, and Srebrenica. Many other ethnic religi and religious groups were discriminated against and persecuted, and they're all represented in the LAUSD student spectrum. Have you declared a holiday for each and every one of these communities? Is it because Armenian lobby is aggressive and you bow to its pressure? Is that it? But others are silent, so they get nothing. Then there is the pandemic. When the country is in the middle of a global pandemic with 30 million Americans fighting for their lives and half a million dead, was this really the top priority for the LAUSD board? What kind of people are the board members showing selective morality to one community at the expense of others? How about the financial aspects? When the schools are close to appease an aggressive lobby, LAUSD loses federal dollars. Who is responsible for that loss? Our children will go to school one day less because of the Armenians. Who is going to compensate for that? Board says they will add a school day. Who's going to pay for that? The board failed on all counts. History, scholarship, legal considerations, democracy, safety, equality, fiduciary, and more. Why is all this? Why go through the loop to appease an aggressive Armenian lobby? Is it really worth it? I urge the board to rescind those ill-informed, ill-advised, and ill-intentioned resolutions. If you think I'm exaggerating, let me read for you statements at a recent LAUSD public meeting by three Turkish-American parents, and you judge for yourself. 
The first letter is as follows. I quote, respectful members of the board, I'm a resident of LA. I joined this call today to express my worry and anxiety about April 24th becoming a holiday in our school district. The minority Turkic students in your district will be more vulnerable to bullying, harassment, and hostility when the April 24th holiday goes into effect. Why do I think this way? It is simply based on recent events and history. There is an increasing hostility and violent aggression against the Turkish community in Los Angeles. This was most recently demonstrated by a racist, racist attack on Cafe Istanbul in Beverly Hills by a group of Armenian extremists on November 4th, 2020. This attack was described as a hate crime by the Beverly Hills Police Department in an official statement. Here in Los Angeles, there is escalating aggression against the Turkish community in Los Angeles. It is already demonstrated in the attack on the restaurant, the assassination of three Turkish diplomats by Armenian hate groups, and the violent attack on a small group of Azerbaijanis and Turks who were engaged in a peaceful protest. These are clear examples of hateful, violent, and dangerous behavior that endangers our children in their own neighborhoods and schools where they should be safe and learning to peacefully thrive with the people of all ethnicities and racial backgrounds. As a member of Turkish American community in LA, I'm extremely concerned about the safety of our children in light of this incident and increasing racial attacks on Turkish people in Los Angeles. I appeal to you to understand our apprehension and please consider having a dialogue with our community, taking into account the physical and emotional well-being of Turkish American children in your district. I request that you reconsider your decision to declare April 24th as a holiday. Here is the second letter. I quote, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank you for listening to me. I'm a parent and resident of LA. I'm quite emotional right now, so I apologize in advance. I recently spoke to another mother in my school district whose daughter is Turkish American. Her story not only broke my heart, but I also, it also made me extremely concerned about my kids' safety and well-being at school. My friend's daughter has been repeatedly bullied and harassed by an Armenian child at school due to her Turkish heritage. At one event, the Armenian child told the Turkish American kid that he will kill all the Turks in the world. This little girl, who was only five years old, was scared after the in incident. That night, she asked her mom why one of her classmates would talk to her hatefully. The bullying continued over an extended period. The girl stopped telling her mom about the incidents at school because she noticed that the bullying, harassment, and discrimination among her classmates was becoming unbearable. This little girl, who was once a con content child, became unhappy, self-conscious, and lost self-confidence. Eventually, she started to suppress her ethnic identity. This is one of many examples that I have recently heard in my community. As a worried parent, I urge you to reconsider your decision to observe April 24th as a holiday, Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. Your decision will lead to increased hate speech, bullying, and harassment of Turkish American kids. My kids are a minority. I want my kids to be in a safe school environment where they don't feel the need to hide their ethnic identity. In today's world,
My kids are already dealing with a lot. Distance learning and COVID have taken a huge toll on my children. Please, please, don't put the burden of bullying and harassment on my child's shoulders. As valued members of the Board of Education, you can protect my children and prevent the potential trauma Turkic children could endure. And finally, the third letter. Dear members of LAUSD Education Board, today I dialed in because of an incident that happened to my son last week. Due to safety concerns, I will refer to my son as Mark. Mark is a successful student who enjoys learning. He's kind and friendly. He has a great interest in history, English, and community service. Mark couldn't join this call, so I will read to you what Mark wrote in his own words. I would like to bring up a concern of mine. I'm a 10th grade student. This week, I have skipped one of my history classes since we started studying the so-called Armenian Genocide. I would like to let you know that I'm Turkish American. I hope you'll hear me out about my concerns about all this. In Beverly Hills last November, a Turkish restaurant, the Cafe Istanbul, was attacked by a group of Armenian extremists simply for being Turkish. My mother, who is Turkish, has been subject to harassment and discrimination. At times, she came into contact with Armenians. She has Armenian friends at her workplace, but that didn't prevent her from being targeted and harassed by Armenians on campus. Turkish kids get bullied and harassed too. For me, I really don't want to be subject to any of that bullying, harassment, discrimination, or being put on the spot in any way myself, right now or in the future. That's the reason I'm writing. As a mother of a teenager, I plead with you to hear out the concerns of my son and my other children. As an educator myself, I know and understand how we can shape and influence the future of youth. It is our obligation to protect them and provide a welcoming environment where they feel like they belong. I regretfully allowed my son to skip the class, understanding his concerns. But what really concerns me is that the curriculum and school environment don't provide a welcoming platform for him. For this reason, I asked the board to reconsider its decision to observe April 24th as a holiday. Will this be the last chapter in LAUSD's poor choices? What does the future hold? Well, those are great discussions for another time. Thank you for joining me. See you next week.